you create the condition of the gravitational field of the planet, which is providing more field forces for the carbon balance to be in operation, that the nitrogen itself becomes irrelevant. Now, every element of the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen is there to feed, so the plant grows faster. hand you over to Lisa and we'll, she'll give you some detail on, on what we found by soaking our seeds with uh, plasma water. Okay, so we did this experiment a while back and um, we haven't actually put um, this out on the public teachings yet, so this is also new. Um, so uh, we're going to start with um, our basic soak. What we did was we soaked Darkon radish um, in the liquid plasma water of CO2 for 12 to 24 hours. I'm not quite sure exactly because we didn't take exact um, exact hours, but what we normally do with our radish because we use these for microgreens. Um, we do soak them overnight, um, sometimes from the afternoon before, and then we plant them either the following morning or the afternoon. Um, so we soak these seeds in the liquid plasma. No GANS included, just the liquid plasma. Um, so what we normally do is we allow these to grow for um, a week, and... Um, when you have a look, you can see that the plasma ones and the water ones look pretty similar. Um, we had, what we normally do is just water them a couple of times um, after they germinate. So they did get plasma water and normal water um, as well. So this looks very similar, but there's a marked difference. As you can see in the next slide, with the root growth. Um, the root growth of the radish seeds soaked in CO2 were much bigger and much more dense. Um, you can see on the pictures, and the normal radish root growth was pretty pathetic in comparison. So it seems to us that what happens is when the plant starts establishing itself, obviously the first thing it takes uh, it, it takes care of is making sure it's got a good good root system to facilitate the rest of its growth. So now, why CO2 actually works? Um, when we look, uh, the the C and the O is the connection between the seed amino acid structure and the CO2 GANs. Um, when we look at the, um, the the two of them together, they are a the the carbon is a connection and the oxygen is a gravitator. So it allows for a connection with the amino acid structure, but it also adds up to the total of the two. When you look at CO, COH and N, it comes up to forty three. And when you look at CO2, 44. it's 44. So it's a very similar field strength, and so it feeds into the amino acid structure. So by soaking the seeds in the liquid plasma water and planting them in the ground, we're changing the entire environment around the plant, which has effects beyond this stage. Um, so I wanted to explain as well that we're not just using this as a fertilizer because the CO2 is not just a fertilizer, it literally changes the whole magrav field of the plant, and in doing so, the plant 
becomes its own little strong spaceship that can withstand the fields of other things around it. Um, so th the healthier and stronger the mangrove field of the plant is, just like us, um, the more we can withstand any incursions from anything coming in. And um, we can be strong in ourselves and the, the plant can, can therefore be really strong. Um, so plasma adds to the plant's mangrove strength. And stronger mangrove in the plant leads to a change in the local environment. Um, plants are more independent of outside mangroves. Therefore, less damage from excessive heat in summer. These are the things we've discovered. Um, strong, healthy plants when usually we would have problems with mold or fungus in a very humid or low light conditions. Those radishes that we normally do, if we have overcast weather and rainy for the days that they are waiting to be cut, they often get mold and fungus. And um, we've had a lot that we've had to kind of throw away. But since we've been using the plasma, we haven't had that problem at all. Um, the plants need less water. We've discovered that. They seem to not uh, look very unhappy when it's hot during the day and you need to come and water them. They still look good. They're not looking like they want to hang down or get a little bit uh, soft. Um, they have really good color. And the, plant much, uh, the plants last much longer after harvesting. Uh, extended shelf life. That is one of the presentations we will be giving. I'm sure some of you have seen it in public. And we've d done a couple of other bits on that since then. Um, so you create a condition in and around the plant which says, I'm healthy, I'm not food. Um, Mr. Kish has explained before, for example, that if you have four people um, and stand them all in a row in a, a mosquito-infested area, you'll find a few that will be bitten badly, you'll find one that doesn't get bitten at all, and you'll find one that um, gets bitten horribly and terribly. And the reason is they're giving off a different magrav strength, either inviting in the mosquitoes because you're saying, I'm food, come and eat me, or you've got a, a strong, healthy magrav field around yourself which says, um, I'm not here, I'm healthy, and I'm not food. And this is what I think that the plants start doing when we feed them with the ganses is they become so strong and independent within themselves that most bugs will not touch them. Um, and so bugs that are drawn to unhealthy plants due to their condition would not, us would not usually attack uh, the plants given the gans. Um, what we found subsequently with um, all our systems is instead of having, let's say, a moth pop in there and lay eggs and get caterpillars and an infestation where we lose all our lettuces, which has happened before, now when we're harvesting, we'll maybe find one fat caterpillar um, and think, okay, well, he's chomped a few leaves, but that's the end of it. So the infestations don't happen anymore. And this is quite crucial to understand that um, it's an unhealthy plant that that pulls in a lot of the bugs. <clears throat>